Hi there, I'm Jen, this is Remembered Reads, and this is going to be the book reviewer tag. I was tagged by Hannah from Hannah's Books, and this tag was created by Gemma from Read a Book Gem. And this is a tag that has three subsections for the questions within the tag. The first subsection is making reviews, and the first question is where do you post your book reviews outside of YouTube? I'm not a huge reviewer even on BookTube, I do more discussion and chat type content regarding books. However, the advanced copies that I do request through NetGalley, I do then review both on NetGalley and on Goodreads. Question number two is what is your star rating system? I go into the five star system with the attitude that any book starts at three stars and if it meets my expectations but does not exceed them it stays at three stars if it does things that I perceive as being wrong uh, or does things poorly or just uh, is clearly poorly researched or so anything like that then it loses stars if it does something stylistically or in any other sense exceptionally then it gets pushed up in general I give very few books five stars I usually have to think that they are both technically excellent and I have to love them um, so yes three stars for me is a perfectly good review and a lot of the very strict genre fiction that I read does get three stars and I consider that quite positive because a lot of those books, especially things like whodunits, especially things like the very generic romances, they are sitting on a very clear framework so there isn't a lot of experimental that, experimental work that an author can do, which isn't to say that some authors don't, some of them do, not always well, but in general uh, those especially will get three stars and that is meant in a very positive way. Uh, question number three is convince me to read your favorite book in no more than five words and I'm not going to do that because and this is the kind of question that I love the idea of because I enjoy watching people do those five word book review videos but I'm never going to convince you to read my favorite book in five words because I have no idea where your tastes lie and I don't mean one person in particular but just the, the whole idea of something that will be universally loved if only you can get people to read it is just not something that I believe in. So if I say that my favorite book is like Case Ella Dyker's The Quiet Violence of Dreams, which is both violent and quite had contains a lot of very overt sexuality, a lot of people are uncomfortable with that. There is also a lot of um, dealing with a very serious sociocultural issues quote unquote in that book, which again some people don't want to read if they're not in the right mood. So I mean I could tell you how fantastic that is in five words, but I don't know that that would convince you to read it. I think this may be taking this question more seriously than it should be because I think we're meant to look at this as fun, but you know me, I don't have fun ever. <laughs> question number five is, is are there any books that you won't review or won't give a star rating to out of principle? There have, yeah, a year or two ago, um, I think it was last year, I read a collection of poetry that I thought was technically pretty skilled and kind of clever in the way it played with found poetry and themes and it mixed basically like marketing language with classical language and that was really interesting but the title and the I was gonna say framing device but it's not in the content itself it's the way it's described by the author and then the title that it's given I thought was incredibly cheap. It referred to the poetry is supposed to be set over a weekend in the Toronto area during a time in the 90s when this uh, serial rapist and murderer was active in the city and it's the setting is supposed to be this Easter weekend when these two girls were murdered. And the thing is that the poetry could have been here's 1992 in general and it could be Easter weekend and you wouldn't have to explicitly tie it to this serial killer. But because it was tied to that I felt like it just cheapened everything so I didn't rate that even though I thought the poetry was good and if it was just this portrait of a weekend in the early 90s in the Toronto area I would have given that quite a good rating but because it was titled this particular way I just thought that's garbage it's not earned by the content so yeah I didn't rate that because on the one hand I don't want to I don't think it's useful to put a moral standard on poetry but at the same time I just thought you essentially so yeah I also think it's hard it's almost impossible to review things that are so out there in the common culture like I would never bother reviewing any of the like any of Shakespeare's plays just because 
you don't read any of that on its own. I mean, maybe there's a chance that someone might read that alone on its own, but having gone to a lot of theater adaptations and seen a lot of um, film adaptations, I feel like with most of those, you can't approach it just as a thing on its own, so I don't think there's a point to reviewing something like that. So I guess there's that as well. Section number two is viewing reviews. So the next question is, a book you really want to read has terrible reviews. Do you still read it? In general, I would say probably yes, because it depends what the terrible reviews are for. I am particularly fond of a couple of subgenres that can get terrible reviews. Like I've said this before, my favorite subgenre in writing in general is uh, histographic metafiction, which when it appears in science fiction, sometimes people get annoyed because it's not straightforward writing that people expect in the genre. And when it's literary fiction, often people are assigned those in school or university or something and don't like them because they're being forced to read them in a particular way. So if a book like that has poor ratings, I don't care because I think the ratings are coming from a, partic from a particular angle. Um, similarly, I think there are some books that sit in the kind of book club or literary fiction category that become I guess I would say crossover hits with an audience that would normally be reading say uh, the romance genre or, or fiction aimed at a younger audience and they're not used to harsher content and if those books contain harsher content sometimes they get poorly reviewed because it's portraying something very ugly and if you're going into it expecting something that's a romance or a young adult novel and that's not that that's this is something that's going to be more gratuitous I think those get poorly reviewed and again that's people going in with a different angle for their reading and Maybe they were looking for escapism and they got this really depressing mess. And I like a good depressing mess, so that kind of review would not turn me off. Question number seven is where do you view book reviews outside of booktube and what is your preferred format? I used to read book reviews way back when, when the Globe and Mail actually had a pull out book section instead of just a side to the uh, entertainment section. I used to read those book reviews and enjoyed reading those kind of long form reviews. I've moved away from that more and more, I think. Um, I do sometimes look at the reviews on Goodreads, but I'm not reading them with the same goal. I'm usually reading those after I pick something up, just to get an idea of where the general attitude is, because that's something that determines if I'm going to leave a review on Goodreads in a case other than when I've read an advanced copy of something. Because sometimes if my opinion is very outside of the standard of the top few reviews, then I'll write something in there just to put that out there. Whereas if my opinion is already well represented on Goodreads, I don't see any point to rewriting essentially the same thing because I trust in people's ability to use the search function. <laughs> um, yeah. Question number eight is, at what point do you view reviews of a book that you're reading, before, during, or after? And do you seek out reviews similar to your own or opposing? Well, when I look at reviews, my favorite thing to look at is the middle of the road reviews. If I'm on Goodreads, I will click the th show three star only first, because I do feel like if you look at the one star reviews, you get a lot of people who are just angry and are being especially biased that way. And a lot of five star reviews are people who are just in love with it. And that's not, and on both of those sides, you get people who have a very intense bias, um, which is fair, but not that interesting, so I generally prefer to read three-star reviews. Um, I usually read that kind of review at the end. I do, as I said, read newspaper reviews sometimes, and I usually read those long before I see the book, because those are usually for new releases, so if I put that on hold at the library, because it's been written up in a newspaper, there's probably a huge queue, so I will not get it for a while. But yeah. Section number three is stand out from the crowd. Uh, question number nine is what is the book with the lowest rating on Goodreads that you have loved? I have read a lot of books that have virtually no ratings on Goodreads, um, primarily poetry, especially if it's Canadian poetry from independent publishers. A lot of those have very few reviews at all. Yeah, so I don't know if that counts, but yeah, a lot of the poetry that I read is not <laughs> not necessarily poorly reviewed, but just not reviewed at all. Question number 10 is which book with the highest rating on Goodreads have you hated? And that has to be Dan Brown's books, because I loathed those. <laughs> actually, I think I, may, I actually did think that those had some redeeming qualities to them, in that at least they're page turners. 
S.M. Sterling, is that the author's name? The, the first Dies the Fire book. I read that for a book club and I hated that. Um, and like with Dan Brown, at least I have fun hating those books, but Dies the Fire, I just loathed on so many levels. And it, that was a book that is the kind of thing that normally I would have thought I liked. And that again, is very popular that there's a series that's, I mean, that's one of those massive series that's just super long. So yeah, probably one of those. All right, I didn't look up who has done this tag already, um, but I'm going to tag the last two people with channels who commented on my last video as of the time that I'm filming this. I may load something in the meantime, so if that's confusing, anyway, I should stop talking about this. Um, and those two people are The Return Cart and Lindsay's Book Life. So there we go. Thanks to Hannah for tagging me. If you are nosy like me, you should go watch her channel because she just did a QA and a and she talked about so many fascinating life things. <laughs> that sounds terrible. I should edit that out, but I probably won't knowing me. And as always, in addition, if you would like to be tagged, please consider yourself tagged. And that's it for now. Ciao.